flying in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of... The Space Patrol! Brought to you by the Checkerboard Super Cereals, Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston. Look for yourself. Let's get out of here fast before he sees us. We can never outrun Terra 5. Get away from those controls. But Mr. Prudian! Rockets are firing on his ship. That means it's still out of control. Otherwise, he would have come after us before now. Esteban, stand by to fire a missile. This time, I'm going to see Corey destroyed with my own eyes. Stand by for exciting action on the capture of Mr. Proteus in just one moment. Hey, gang, been watching the Space Patrol signal crew practicing, and hey, I bet they had themselves a nourishing breakfast with rice checks. Because look, tops for takes. That means rice checks right down the line. Triple toasted biscuits, flavor toppers for breakfast or snacks. Tops for size. That spells rice checks, too. Bite-sized design. Man, oh, man, it's neat. Hollow inside. Fills up with milk or cream. Tops for get up and go. Eat a good nourishing breakfast with a big bowl full of rice checks, and wowee, you have it. Get up and go, and energy plus. How about it, Space Patrollers? Try it yourself. For breakfast or snacks, rice checks. And if a neat whole wheat treat is what you're after, then try power-rich wheat checks. Checks, rice or wheat in the red and white checkerboard packages. Tops three ways. Tops for taste. Tops for size. Tops for get up and go. Rice checks, wheat checks. The cereals with a swell free Space Patrol trading card inside each package. Somebody's looking at your Space Patroller, and oh boy, is he delicious. It's the Funny Bunny Salad, one of many fun-to-eat salads featuring cling peaches and cottage cheese with delicious, crunchy rye crisp to make them taste even better. Have Mom get free recipes and these three keen products at her grocer's today. In pursuit of the master of disguise, Mr. Proteus, Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy faced almost certain destruction when their ship, Terra 5, sped out of control on a collision orbit head-on toward a small asteroid. In making his escape, Proteus had smashed the control panel of Terra 5, and Buzz was forced to shoot out a viewport so the outgoing air would alter their course enough to miss the asteroid. Now, as their ship free falls through space, still without power, Buzz and Happy are in the sealed off bunk compartment, using an emergency Atomo battery to power the spaceophone to make an important call. I have a ship standing by, Buzz. I'll find you. We well, uh, may, have, may have to look around for us, but the last reading I took, we were on Space Meridian 154.8, just entering the asteroid belt. All right, Buzz. I'll find you. Don't worry. Meanwhile, we're going to try to repair the ship. Hurry out. Did we get rid of him? Corey has managed to survive so many traps I set for him. But Mr. Proteus, the ship was without power. There was no possible way he could have avoided crashing that asteroid. Just the same, I'll only be certain when I see the wreckage of his ship. I'm going to satisfy myself, but I have had my revenge.
How did he do it? You, you mean Corey didn't crash? Look for yourself. Let's get out of here fast before he sees us. We can never outrun Terra 5. Get away from those controls. But, but Mr. Shut up. The rockets aren't firing on his ship. That means it's still out of control. Otherwise, he'd have come after us before now. Esteban, stand by to fire a missile. But this time, I'm going to see Corey destroyed with my own eyes. work faster. You want me to help you, sir? No. Uh, all we got left to do is repair the wiring. Fire one. Smoking rockets, what was that? And I hope it wasn't. Proteus, he's still out there. Yeah, and that missile was almost in here. And by the fire, too. Standing by. Fire two. Oh, Roger, that was close. He's sighting in on us. The next one will be on target. Yes, and that means us. What are we going to do, sir? He just waited a few more seconds. We have these main power cables hooked up. Yeah, but he's not going to wait. This one is it, Esteban. Stand by to fire three. Standing by. I'm going to wait until you're happy. Fire rockets. But Commander, they, they won't fire. The main power cables aren't hooked up. They are now. Commander, your hand! Fire rockets! Fire three! Hey! He missed us, Commander! You did it! Commander! He fired his rocket. His ship's working again. Now he'll come after us. He'll catch us. Oh, shut up. Shut up and let me think. Let's get out of here. Please, Mr. Crowley, and forget Corey. Come on, sir. Your hand sure took a beating, sir. Well, go ahead. Just trying to get him up for now. Yes, sir. your ship have. There's another one standing off from you, about 15 DUs. about arresting me. You heard me the first time, Proteus. Kill your rocket. Suppose you let me speak to your commanding officer. I'm in command of this ship, but don't let that fool you. I have a missile aimed at you. Now cut your rockets right now. Yes, Miss Carroll. As you say, I've cut my rockets. I'm your prisoner. That's better. Frankly, Miss Carroll, I'm glad it's over. I'm tired of running away from Commander Corley. You may take possession of my ship. I will not resist. Why, uh, yes, of course. I'll pull in under you. When we're coupled together, you'll board my ship and come unarmed. Very well, Miss Carroll. I'm ready. Proteus out. 
Mr. Proteus, what are you doing? But don't you see? Here's a fast space patrol battle cruiser, a valuable hostage, and an opportunity to destroy Corey, all just for the taking. But I don't understand. She's alone. And she thinks I'm alone. Unnecessary, Miss Carroll. I promised you I'd come aboard without any weapons. Yes, when does your promise mean anything? All right, you can put your hands down now. You see, Miss Carroll, it was quite useless, wasn't it? After all, why should I carry a gun when my friend Esteban has one and he's standing right behind you? I warned you about tricks, Proteus. <laughs> well, this isn't a trick, Miss Carroll. All right, Esteban. Oh, you're not fooling me. <laughs> Let's go! First to crack the sound barrier. First to fly twice as fast as the speed of sound. You know who he is, fellas and girls? Major Chuck Yeager, test pilot on Convair's famous Flying Triangle, the XF-92A, and just about the world's fastest human being. Well, let's watch Chuck as he puts the triangle through a test run right now. Come in, Major Yeager. Here's a flying triangle taking off. It's the world's first Delta Wing airplane, the XF-92A, designed by the Convair Aircraft Corporation in San Diego. I'm Major Chuck Yeager, Air Force test pilot for this Delta Wing airplane. Now, let's have a closer look at this unusual Air Force interceptor as it comes back from a test flight. The wings are swept back 60 degrees. The length of the delta wing is 42 feet. Speed high subsonic, about 700 miles an hour. Now that you've seen one of the planes I fly, let me tell you what it takes to be a test pilot. To start with, I have to stay in good condition. That means get plenty of rest, plenty of exercise, and good food at every meal. For breakfast, I like a cereal that really tastes good and has plenty of energy. Like rice checks and wheat checks, no other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. Remember what I said about staying in good shape. I'll be seeing you. Make sure you stay in good condition like Chuck Yeager, Tony LeVere, Phil Houghton, and many other famous test pilots. Have yourself a nourishing breakfast every morning with Chex, the cereals that are tops three ways for taste, for size, for get up and go. That's checks, rice or wheat. Tops with America's top pilot. And now back to Space Patrol. Switch on the power. Let's see if it works. Yes, sir. Good as new. Good. Now the first thing you better do is check with Carol. Brenda Corey calling Carol Carlisle. Come in. Carol. Someone's putting out power, sir. I don't like this, Hank. I shouldn't have sent her after Proteus. 
The command, you could just let him get away, and besides, all she had to do was just make him stand by out in space. Just the same, I don't like it. Terra 5 calling Carol. Cadet Happy to Carol. Do you read me? their space car in a free fall orbit, Proteus and Esteban race in their hostage ship toward the fringe of the twilight belt of Mercury, where the intense rays of the sun blend into the shadows of the shady side, where the temperature is an unbearable 160 degrees, and where a small spherical structure jets out of the rocky cliffs, the hideout of Mr. Proteus. Yes, Mr. Proteus, I understand. I can use one of the uh, solar reflectors from the building power unit. And Hendrix, waste no time. I will be landing there shortly in a space patrol ship. Don't worry, Mr. Proteus. I'm here alone, but it will be ready. I just finished rigging the solar reflector, Mr. Proteus. I was about to test it when you arrived. I'll do it now. I must be certain it works before I let Corey know where I am. I have hung a garment over there. I focus the mirror to strike it. Then I open... Excellent, Henry. You see, we'll let Corey come down the corridor to the cell. Let him think he's rescuing the girl. Then when he tries to get away, we'll get all three. Corey, the cadet, and the girl. direction they blasted off. And they must have Carol. They shouldn't have let her do it. Proteus, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Come in. Proteus? This is Commander Corey. What have you done with Carol? Suppose you come and find out. All right, Proteus, just where do I come? Well, you've been here before, Corey. I'm at my hideout on Mercury. Come and get me if you can. What have you done with Carol? Maybe you'd like to talk to her, hmm? Don't come here. It's a trap. Carol, are you all right? <laughs> She's all right, Corey, so far. But it's up to you to see that she stays that way. For your information, she's being put in the solar room to await your arrival. All right, Proteus, you've got yourself a date. Let's pull rockets half on our way to Mercury. Commander, I don't suppose there's any doubt that Carol is right. We're walking right into a trap. No doubt. The odds are about 20 to 1 against any of us ever getting out of there alive. You want to turn back? You kidding, sir? Well aware of the danger that awaits them on Mercury, the two space patrolmen grimly set out on a mission that may very well be their last adventure. With Carol's life at stake, they do not hesitate to risk their own lives to try to save her, nor do they hesitate to accept the challenge of their arch enemy, Mr. Proteus, all against great odds. Soon, Terra 5 lowers into position at the side of the structure on Mercury and magnetically couples to the airlock. waits Mr. Proteus, ready to spring his trap, convinced that this time he will not fail to destroy Buzz and Happy and Carol in the bargain. Get 
the water. Oh, yes, sir. Sure, it's a good thing we brought this water along, sir. Remember how thirsty we got when we were in that solar room? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sudden! Behind you, look out! Huh? I'm top of the gun! Hey, up. Come in, my son! Smoke and rocket, did you see that, sir? You're up. The solar mirror, they've been waiting for me. Well, we'll stay in this corner for a few minutes anyway. Maybe there's a way out down this way, sir. Check it. Nothing, sir. Just a closet full of Proteus's disguises. Means the only way out is the way we came in. Oh, right past that solar there. But they have a chance. Well, look, uh, uh, Commander, maybe we can use that stuff in the closet, disguise ourselves to look like Proteus, and, and then they can think he's looking in the mirror. What are you waiting for, Corey? You're trapped. Come on out. All right, I can wait as long as you can. Don't take your eyes away from that corner. The moment we see anything, we'll let them have it. Well, even if we haven't got any food, it's a good time we got all this water. Water? <laughs> Come on, you threw the water out. But the matter, what would we be needing it? Not if this works. What, what do you got in mind, sir? Yeah, what, what'll have that water if they sit with the solar mirror? Well, it'll go up in a cloud of steam. A cloud of steam, I get it. It's a slim chance, but it won't have any choice. Do you think a cloud of steam will be enough to cover you? No, maybe not, but it should confuse them for a second. Now I'll give them something to shoot at. for disguise, isn't it? Wrong. Good to see how he likes this one. I'll get you, Corey. This time I'll get you. Yeah. Hendricks is going to try to try to escape. I get you, sir. So you make a lot of noise. Right, right. Right, up. now. Hendrix is getting away! Mr. Proteus, don't use the solar mirror. It's me, Hendrix! Where are you going, Hendrix? What's the situation back there? Like a cinch. After all, how long can they hold out? Corey's a smart one. He won't give up easily. He'll try anything. Yeah, I guess you're right. Say, suppose he disguises himself. What? Well, he could disguise himself as Hendrix and stand right next to you. You'd never know him. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Yes, Proteus, you're right. I do feel ridiculous in this get up. Corey! Yeah, now we're even, almost. Right, half count. Come out now. Bring the prisoners. Who's this? I guess it's another one of Proteus's men. Happy found him back there in the closet. All right, you're under arrest, too. Hey, who do you think he's shoving? No, when I get back in line with the rest of the prisoners. Happy, go to the ship and get some handcuffs. Happy! Where is that cadet? Uh, uh, I'll get him for you. Yes, 
Happy, <laughs> come here. I'm already here, Commander. <laughs> What's the matter? It's me. It's Happy. I'll admit it's a very clever disguise. What's the matter, Commander? Don't you recognize me? No, no, I've never seen you before in my life. Hey, but, 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 but wait, wait a minute, Commander. I'm, it's me. It's Happy. But, 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 but nothing. You're under arrest. Oh. Is that right, Carol? That's right, Buzz. Hi, Commander. Hey, who, who's that? In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Nestle's Ever Ready, the Instant Cocoa, and famous Nestle's Chocolate Bar. You know, Space Patrollers, Cadet Happy won't mind if they put him behind bars. No, sir, as long as they're Nestle's Chocolate Bars. I want to tell you, all Space Patrollers really go for Nestle's Bars, because Nestle's have what it takes. Plenty of nourishing milk, you bet. Lots of pep-up sugar and how. And there are three sensational kinds to choose from. There's smooth, creamy milk chocolate in the red and white wrapper. The chock full of almond bar in the blue and white wrapper. And this great crunch bar in the red and blue pack. As Hap would say, smoke and rocket. It's just full of sweet, crisp surprises. You get behind a Nestle chocolate bar, fellas and girls, and you'll be eating your way through the greatest treat in the whole universe. And remember... N-E-S-T-L-E-S -E -S, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. And now a scene from next week's exciting adventure, Baccarati's Z-Ray. All the guards have broke ship in some kind of a trance, and the ship blasted off. Blasted off? But, Commander, that means he'll go back in, back in the past, back in time, and hide. Yes, Happy, only this time we know where he's headed. We're going to follow him. Back to 20th century Earth. A trip back in time? Be sure to see what happens when Buzz and Happy discover that a wanted criminal has been hiding in the past. A criminal with a strange connection to Prince Baccarati and Baccarati Z-Ray. Next week on Space Patrol. was brought to you today by the bite size cereals and the red and white checkerboard packages. Wheat check, rice check. Be sure to hear Space Patrol on ABC Radio every Saturday. Consult your newspaper for time and station. Thomas stars on ABC television.